Can you effectively manage a losing swing trade? Find out how on the next SMB Forex and Futures Weekly Trade Review. My name is Mark Principato. Thank you for watching. So in today's segment, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Typically, when you watch trading videos, a winner is usually covered. Everything about the winner, how big it is, the reasons, how great it is, how great the system is, all that kind of stuff. That's great, and you can learn things from that. But today, I'm going to be covering how to manage a loser. Because as we all know, you learn the greatest lessons from your losses. The key to managing a loser is this. You have to ask yourself the question, at the time, was there enough information available to minimize or avoid the loss? So let's talk about the following trade and see what we could learn in that regard. So what we have here is the pound dollar. Now the type of trade that I was attempting to take was a swing trade short. The reasoning for that trade is as follows. First of all, we have an area of interest. This is a resistance area, a max fake resistance area. It's a very wide resistance zone. Anything can happen in that zone. I would be looking for short structure or bearish structures. Well, in this case, a lower high formed on the four hour chart. Now, with that, also an inside bar formed, which is a form of validation. It all lined up. Everything was present. Area of interest, formation, and validation. But this was not a perfect trade, or this was not a perfect setup. There were some problems. First of all, the trend is bullish. That's problem number one. So already, shorts need to be limited, or the expectations from your short needs to be limited. Also, you need to be very sensitive to problematic price action. Secondly, the trade was taken during the Asian session, which is the least active session of all the sessions in the Forex day. That also is going to affect follow through. So again, you have to watch for problematic price action. As the trade unfolds overnight, which I could not watch, I just had to record and go to sleep. I just had to get up the next day and see how it went. Anything can happen. All right. Remember, price action is random. Now, and what happened here in this trade was this. I went in with a small expectation for a swing trade, meaning I may hold it for a day or two, but I wasn't going to have a large expectation in terms of target. So I set my target here where this little circle is. That's a 90 pip target from my entry. My entry was at 57.95. My stop was placed at 58.30. As the trade progressed during the night, at one point it was up about 20 pips. Why didn't I take the profit? For one, I was not awake. Okay, so I had my stop in place. I had my target in place. I could have gotten stopped out completely overnight. That was the risk that I took. But instead, when I woke up and I pulled up my chart, I saw that we had an outside bar formed and closed. That was it. Something that's weak should not form an outside bar on a four-hour chart in this way. So it's not weak. There's no more reason for me to be in this trade. So I exited the trade. I exited the trade for minus 20 pips. Now, my maximum loss was 30 pips. I managed to save myself 10 pips. Is that really a big deal? It's not really a big difference. But here's what you have to consider. Swing trades typically have stops between 30 and 50 pips wide. And they have targets usually greater than 80 or 90 pips. So in this case, I was able to keep my stop relatively small and got out even earlier than I had to. And the trade obviously went much higher. I saved myself an extra 10 pips and I managed to get out with a very low risk relative to the type of reward I was looking for. If you notice here on this close up on this hourly chart, you can see the entry that was taken, which was based on the four hour chart. So it wasn't the optimal place. But when you're taking a swing trade during the Asian session, you're not going to get the optimal place. Also, you can see here the exit. I could have exited earlier if I was awake to see the outside bar that formed on the hourly. But hey, you're not going to get the best entries and best exits all the time. The point here is I recognized that the trade was no longer working and I didn't have to wait for my full stop. When you're in a trade, this type of trade was an aggressive trade. You have to understand the limitations and more importantly, you have to recognize when it's doing something that it should not. 
This is what allows you to minimize losses. This skill also allows you to ride winners longer. I want you to realize losses are part of trading and the skill that you need to develop is how to read them properly and how to manage them effectively. When you're able to do that, you'll be much more effective at listening to what the market wants to do and not what you think it wants to do. I hope you found this video helpful and informative and I hope it helps you develop your trading skills further. I'd love to hear some feedback from you, so please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching. My name is Mark Principato and I will see you next week.